کنگره آمریکا نمایشگاه دو روزه نقض حقوق بشر در ایران گرامی داشت شهیدان قتل عام 67 شهیدان قیام سراسری و جمعه خونین زاهدان سخنرانی های شماری از اعضای مجلس نمایندگان حمایت از مبارزه مردم ایران برای آزادی و یک جمهوری دموکراتیک نمایشگاه دو روزه نقض حقوق بشر در ایران در سال روز جمعه خونین زاهدان و به مناسبت قتل عام 67 و کشتار قیام کنندگان توسط رژیم آخوندی در سالن هویر در ساختمان ریبورن کنگره آمریکا برگزار شد. در این نمایشگاه شماری از اعضای کنگره از هر دو حزب دموکرات و جمهوریخواه و مشاوران شماری از اعضای کنگره حضور داشتند و از آن بازدید کردند. در این نمایشگاه تصاویر شهدای قیام سراسری و مقاومت بیش از چهل ساله مردم ایران در برابر رژیم ضد بشری آخوندی به نمایش گذاشته شد که مورد توجه بازدید کنندگان قرار گرفت. شماری از نمایندگان کنگره ضمن بازدید از نمایشگاه طی سخنانی بر حمایت خود از مبارزه مردم ایران برای آزادی و یک جمهوری دموکراتیک تاکید کردند. Thank you so much for being here. I am joining my colleagues today and the United States House of Representatives in Washington and we are here to condemn the Iranian regime for the 1988 massacre and for the many other violations against the Iranian people since then. I am so proud of the support that my resolution has achieved from across the aisle. Democrats and Republicans across the House of Representatives have joined me, over 100 authors, uh, in supporting House Resolution 627, urging the United States and the administration and our allies to publicly condemn the massacre and pressure the Iranian regime to provide detailed information to the families of the victims about their loved ones and their final resting places. I also urge the administration, along with my colleagues and the United States and its allies, to put on their agenda to help the families of these victims and help the Iranians that we love here in the United States that are suffering to identify and prosecute the perpetrators of the 1988 massacres and the massacres of protesters against this regime and the recent uprisings. I also want to mention House Resolution 100 uh, that we were so very proud uh, to support with over 239 co-sponsors. And I want to express my belief in Madam Rajavi's 10-point plan. It is very, very sensible. Americans support this plan, members of Congress support this plan, and I'm so proud uh, to support this plan and to uh, call Madam Rajavi a friend. I know she is a friend to Iran, and she is a friend to the Iranian people, and we are working together to ensure that Iran is free and democratic, 
And I thank you so much uh, for your support. If you are living in Iran, if you are living under this regime, I encourage you to stand strong, uh, to fight with your brethren, to fight with your fellow citizens, and know that the future is bright and that democracy is just on the horizon. If you continue your fight and you continue to fight what you, be what you believe in and fight for those who have fallen before you, then I do believe that you will achieve victory for the good people of Iran. Thank you. Hey, it's a privilege to be here with uh, our friends, Iranian-American friends. We want a free Iran that respects the human rights of its citizens. And today we have barbaric dictatorship in Iran that murders its people. As we walk around this room, we, we read about the 30,000 that were murdered in 1988. This regime hates its people, takes away the freedom of its people. They export terror to its neighbors and they They've murdered many Americans as well in Iraq. Uh, so I stand with the people of Iran because we want a free Iran that respects its own citizens, that wants to be a good neighbor, and that wants to be an ally with the free world. So I want to thank the folks here today uh, for reminding us just how evil and barbaric. Thank you very much for allowing me to visit with you today. <laughs> Thanks. My privilege. I'm here today to stand, stand with the people of Iran, grateful for those who have brought forward, who are providing the transparency that we desperately need to help condemn the Iranian regime for the 1988 massacre, for denying the, the evidence of this manifest set of crimes against humanity. We all must seek the truth, and transparency is what gets us to the truth. So to the people of Iran, know that you have friends. You have friends that are working on your behalf here in the United States, and we will continue. Thank you. Good to be with you. Thank you for allowing me to join you today. I'm Congressman Rich McCormick, Georgia 6. What we're addressing today is not just a problem for Iran, but for the world. Iran is sponsoring terrorism all over the world, and it has a horrible history of human relations. Have you seen what they've done to their own people? 30,000 arrests, hundreds upon hundreds of killings, murders, not through prosecutions and, and legal proceedings, but just through dictatorship, tyranny, a theocracy that has no godliness to it whatsoever. We stand today in defiance of something that started not just in 1988, but well before that. If you look at what's happening around the world right now, Iran is the biggest sponsor of foreign terrorism. They killed 600 American troops in Iraq. They have sponsored terrorism all over the world, and they should be listed amongst the worst and most evil propagators of terrorism around the world in the last century. So we stand resolute together, not just Republicans, not just the House, but as an American community. We need a new regime in Iran. We need to call for those despots to be thrown out. We need to stand against them in every way, shape, and not just with our political might, but our economic might. We appreciate your time today, and we look forward to a brighter and more moral future. God bless you. in this effort. You know, I am reminded of things that Frederick Douglass said when he said that if you will find what a person, what a man will submit to, that is exactly what he or she 
will get. If you cave in, if you give in, if you give up, you know that you can never ever win. So I commend the resistance movement, the effort of people all over the world, that of those who submit themselves to the danger, submit themselves to not knowing what the outcome, what the result will be. But Frederick Douglass also thought and also believed that protest and resistance were the ultimates in bringing about change. Change is difficult, it's elusive, and if you dig in, stay dug in, then I guarantee you that change will come. And just like that river, I've been running ever since. It may be a long time coming, but I know some change is going to come. And so I urge you to never give up, never capitulate, never give in, never bow and submit to the oppressive forces. Thank you very much. Have a good day. I want to pay tribute to all of those who are keeping the faith with the people of Iran, many of whom have been massacred because they simply want greater liberty and the ability to live a life where they can achieve their own dreams. I want to thank very much the Iranian American community for bringing this extraordinary exhibit to the capital of the United States to remember those who have given their lives truly uh, in the cause of the future for their own country, for their own people. And I will take this back to my own region. Freedom means never surrender. And to those who are in the United States of America, who are helping keep hope alive for the people of Iran, thank you. Because you inject our country with the full meaning of liberty and you help the American people understand what tyranny is and the excruciatingly high cost of not having freedom. So we elevate our hopes and our prayers for the people of Iran that they will achieve their dreams, they will achieve an open society because of your efforts of standing at their side. Thank you so very, very much for allowing me to deliver this message of hope and the advice again. Freedom means never surrender. Thank you.